All right. After this, I can probably move this over a little. Yeah, actually, that works out well. That's fine. Okay. So today, uh, I'm finally back to doing gold box. We're not doing a speed run. The, uh, the gold box games just released on Steam. And so I am checking them out. I've already looked at them a little since grabbing them when they released the other day. But uh, now I've decided to do a casual playthrough to see, you know, just kind of how they function. A couple of notes of what I've looked at so far. They're supposed to include the Gold Box Companion, which uh, is supposed to be a HUD that provides a bunch of help and little things for running the game. Most of which doesn't matter for the speedrun. Yes, this is the Steam version. Uh, so, yep. It's supposed to include a gold box companion, but I haven't get, gotten mine to operate. Perhaps that's because I had to upgrade DOSBox. DOSBox 0.74, which is the version that comes with all the GOG games, all the Steam games that run with DOSBox as well, doesn't work on my computer for whatever reason. It stopped functioning. It loads up a game like maybe one times in 5, 10, or 20, depending on how it's feeling. So I have to multi load multiple times before it actually will load the game, which is really rough for speedrunning the DOSBox games when I have to save and quit a lot. Uh, so I've upgraded all of my DOSBox to 0.76. I just copy all the files and paste it into the folders where those are, and everything works fine. But for whatever reason, maybe because of that, I can't get Gold Box Companion to work with the uh, Steam version. I don't know. It's not the full version of Gold Box Companion, from what I understand. It doesn't add things like character editors, but it's supposed to do the HUD, auto mapping, journal entries, things like that, as far as I understand. But can't get mine to work, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not super worried about it. I'm very used to playing these games old school, and I have access to the journal entries and stuff if I really need to. And most of the stuff for the Gold Box Companion also is not, would n either not be allowed for a speedrun or would uh, not be all that helpful with it. The one thing that I'd like for it casually, if I could get it to work, which apparently isn't included with the Steam version anyway, but the ability to make and level up Paladins and Rangers in pool of radiance that'd just be fun casually especially for this playthrough because i'm planning to take these characters and see just how easy it is to transfer between so a couple of things right off the bat that look neat is that it comes with an additional hud on its own which allows for easy reloads uh it doesn't matter much for streaming but the windows that automatically come up when i play with the old gog versions are either super duper tiny or they uh or i have to try and make them full screen but it's really hard to maneuver around my other windows when i have full screen dos box running but this lets you set a window size so i've got a bigger slightly more useful window uh that i like a lot better than the tiny little one i was running before so that's nice and if i can transfer easily between games that would help out for if i want to uh, pick up again doing a multiple game speedrun maybe eventually a full series speedrun we have to see i still have to get up the nerve to work through pool of darkness and get a speedrun for that first but this is just going to be a casual playthrough today i have uh three fighters i have four fighters i have a third fighter who i'm going to convert to a thief probably about sometime in secret of the silver blades for the most part you really don't need thieves in the gold box games i found out through speed running there are a few instances where they might kind of be useful but uh the, so there will be a few things i'll miss out on since i won't have a thief but the problem is that thieves are really really bad without uh some other attachment especially in the early games your other option is to do a multi-class fighter thief so that at least you'll be able to get three attacks every two rounds eventually and uh still be able to level up thieves forever and get small amounts of hit points as you reach the 20 and 30 levels of thieves but 
I just think that uh, Pool of Darkness is probably the place where they'd be most useful anyway, so I'm just going to wait until Sick of the Silver Blades. Yeah, Half Elf or Elf Fighter Mage Thief would be moderately useful. Uh, full Elf would let you get to level 11 Mage as well, so you could do 5th level spells, which uh, would be the top out. The only problem is that, again, that I'm intending to run this all the way through uh, Sick of the Silver Blades and finally do a Pools of Darkness casual playthrough and see if I can finish that game for once. And even a multi-class uh, thief, by the time you get into there, the other levels will be insignificant. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a, uh, out with a human fighter eventually turning into a thief. I'll at least be able to get to the point where the fighter can attack two times per round uh, and have a beefy amount of base hit points. I went ahead and made her... Uh, female for the thematics, even though it uh, greatly reduces my maximum strength. I've maxed all the stats again because trying to roll randomly is just too much of a pain. It's like, whatever. This is how I played casually as a kid, how my parents played casually and taught me to play it. If they give you the opportunity to max out stats, you might as well. We're not going to get max hit points every level anyway, but at least having the starting, it's these rules are not designed well for having random or low hit points rather than roll for a couple of hours before starting the game i spent just 20 minutes building them and whatever let's go ahead and start greetings courageous ones i am rolf appointed by the council to introduce newcomers to the fair city of flan if you'll accompany me i will start the tour so i also went in and messed with all my settings to usual and I deactivated the sound for Pool of Radiance. When I first started speedrunning this and was having discussions on uh, forums, a couple of interested people came in and talked. Lag.com wasn't really thrilled with the idea of turning off sound because you should speedrun the game the way you play it casually, but the sound lags this game so badly and is so insignificant, I would rather play casually with the sound off too, so... It's just the other gold box games are fine, but Pool of Radiance, just having the sound on makes it so you can't uh, buffer any steps while you walk because the sound cancels that out. It seriously does. You have to, you probably get about two steps a second if you're very good in rhythm and you have to press them exactly. But if you mess up and press it too quickly, it loses it. And so you end up wandering into places you shouldn't. So... When uh, when I was told how to disable that and figured out disabling it, it makes it a lot better. So no sound, sorry. I have the background music playing because whatever, but... You now face an entrance to the Temple of Tyr. There are three temples in Flan. Tyr's, Thunes, and Tempest. Tyr's is the largest and houses Bishop Rakio. If you'll turn around now, you'll see the entrance to the passenger docks area we just departed. Few ships dare the perilous passage here, but the Council is developing a plan to open up the sea lanes. Please follow me. Behind these doors are the special training schools where adventurers increase their skills. Let us now go to the city's most important building. We are just outside the city hall. Proclamations are posted on these walls. Inside the city clerk awards the council's commissions. Commissions are the quickest way to fame and fortune. On your right is one of the entrances to Soon's temple. As with all Flan's temples, various clerical services are offered inside. On your left is an entrance to the city park. Beyond this gate are the monster-ridden areas of the old city. We are slowly preparing for settlement. The council offers a generous reward to those who clear areas of monsters. Our tour is ended. Again, let me urge you to apply to the city clerk for a commission. Goodbye and good fortune. You don't actually have to go for the, uh... There's some... There are only a couple of quests you actually have to get a uh, commission for. That's what I want max speed anyway. Specializes in arms and armor. So... I'm going to start out with banded mail and actually two-handed swords for my fighters. Because theoretically this should... Uh, this will give us an armor class of zero, which will slightly reduce the uh, difficulty modifier, although I might be too high for it to matter much anyway.
we'll go ahead and give a shield to the uh, cleric because they don't have any really good two-handed weapons that I remember. None I've ever bothered with. Darts are mostly useful for insta-killing monsters that we're going to put to sleep at a short range. Because even a 1 to 3 damage dart will uh, take care of that. So we're going to see a lot more monsters than we do in the speedrun because the slums, random battles at least, have uh, dynamic difficulty adjusting to your total hit points, your armor class, your caster levels. But... Uh, we should still be okay. Alright. It's probably still going to be fastest to uh, rest for days rather than to try and use those Cure Light Wound spells to heal, but I can use them uh, if I need to just bring up a couple of people and I don't really have a good place to rest. And since this is a casual playthrough for me, because it's what I do, I am going to go ahead and narrate just about all the things here. You've entered the monster-crawling slums of Flans. Small ugly things scurry from beneath your feet. In the distance, an alarm sounds. Oh, some angry orcs. Once I get some... Oh, and I forgot to rest and memorize the spells anyway. So yeah, rather than the four we face... Uh, with the speed run of this, we have a big amount, which... It's not really helpful because they still don't give enough experience to be worth uh, worrying about. Okay, they surrender, which is nice. Not even going to bother taking their petty cash. I never even memorized the spells. That's kind of hilarious. Well, we'll be able to rest in here once we uh, kill these guys. You just do nothing, lady. Whoops. I am way too used to speedrunning the first two games. I generally don't move around monsters unless uh, I'm too used to having Dust of Disappearance so they can't see me and attack me as I move around. Okay. Oh yes, actually. Um, this has a little bit of loot, so we'll take this Clerical Scroll. With the monsters defeated, this is a safe place to rest. Eight days will fill us up. Let's see, I can either do the uh, captain or get a total of six. Let's go ahead and get the six. Oh, that one's still alive and hit me. Oh well. Yes. Leather armor is magical plus one, so it sells for a small amount of money. That's the only thing we care about here, though. And let's go ahead and there, do that proper since we're only down a little bit. Should go ahead and cast Bless before all these if I'm planning to uh, memorize right after the battles. Gotta get back in the habit of doing that. Now let me see how well of the rest of the slum I remember before I have to go look in a uh, 
look in the journal to the map to see what else there is to investigate here. The slums I used to fully clear before uh, somebody revealed that you could manipulate clearing the slums by sleeping until you did enough encounters to make up for the set encounters. Uh, Shara's the one I want to give the bow to. Don't want her using it yet, but... Okay, this might be a better group to sleep than the, uh... Looks like it only put to sleep five. That's kind of unfortunate. Doesn't matter that much, though. These guys should surrender as soon as their turn comes up again. Yikes. She took uh, quite a bit of damage. Okay, they're surrendering. Alright, what we want now is the Bracers, which will finally give her an okay armor class. For the most part, the game seems to run based on its cycles and everything else pretty much exactly like the uh, GOG version. go ahead and return to town to train as soon as we uh, get enough experience for everyone to get level 2, which should be soon enough. Should have gone ahead and bought her some normal arrows for this short bow. I don't want to use up the plus ones on these kinds of lower level fights, but uh, biggest problem with a cleric in Pool of Radiance and another reason to not have one in the uh, speedrun is that there are no staff slings here, so there's no ranged weapons that clerics can use. First edition clerics couldn't use slings. Staff slings are kind of an unearthed arcana style weapon too. They weren't in the base game, but they were added in later supplements like unearthed arcana and I think in second ed. Uh, they actually don't have anything. Their loot is we have to search for it afterwards. Thieves, they claimed. Plus one protection ring and another short bow, which I can give to them to use if I'm desperate. Okay, that puts us at 2405, so we nearly have the experience to uh, 
I think actually we can rest anywhere fine here. I could actually fight a few of the random battles and, uh... get the last 95 experience I need. Oh, we just got surprised by orcs. How nice. Seven. Surprise party of goblins, very nice. Sleep spells are so totally powerful in 1st uh, and 2nd edition. We cannot hit this guard for the life of us. Last one alive realizes his predicament and surrenders. Last one that wasn't uh, sleeping at least. Okay, that puts her up to 247, so... Brilliant. we have enough money to uh, train. I have one piece of jewelry and two gems. Two pieces of jewelry, okay, so. Six gems and two pieces of jewelry, so if I get lucky, I might save the game and uh, if I don't get enough. Twelve hundred. Horrible gems. <laughs> Mostly to money change. That's the whole reason to do that. I don't need to identify it to sell it, but uh, identifying the item does uh, mon changes your money automatically for you. Okay, and then we can sell that. Alright, well, we all have enough to train. That's the important part. Alright, that's good. 
Outside the city hall, the city clerk awaits an inside to award commissions. Proclamations are posted on the wall, and in your journal, you note Proclamations 44. Uh, no, 64. Sorry. 78. 9, 109, and 59. Okay, 64. Be it known that the Council is interested in acquiring information as to the disposition of various formerly living entities rumored to be harassing honest citizens in the vicinity of Valge Valhigen Graveyard. A reward is offered to any person who shall travel to said graveyard and return an eyewitness account. Okay, 78. Be it known that the council is offering a reward to any person or persons who can provide information as to the disposition of several council agents who have been sent to investigate the unseemly happenings in the vicinity of Valhigen Graveyard. I don't think that ever comes to fruition, though, finding any council agents. Uh, 109. Be it known that the Council is offering an inducement to any individual who shall serve in the rescue force for the mercenary band of Ty Mog the Invincible, who has disappeared inside Valigan Graveyard. Again, nothing ever comes of that that I remember. And 59. Be it known that the Council is interested in reclaiming the remaining block of the city of New Fland. To reclaim said blocks, they must first be cleared of monsters, vermin, and other uncivilized inhabitants. To this end, the council is offering a reward to any person or group who is responsible for clearing any block of the old city. All right. Seven hit points, not bad. Three hit points, not great. This is going to make, again, the random encounters a little bit bigger, so maybe I should have done all of my random encounters first I, before coming back, but I also didn't want to uh, get too much experience so the cleric couldn't level more. buy some normal arrows for Shara and let her uh, shoot from the back with her new bow for a while. Oh, she could have bought more. I thought by now she would... Maybe I just can't afford any more. Nope, I'm fine. Alright. 13 platinum left? Okay. And we should get enough money from doing the rest of these to level up the next level. Okay, I can rest here. So I'm memorize two sleep spells now. An extra two light wounds. Okay, now there is a powerful group of orcs in here. Large orc snarls at you. I dare you break into our home. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and put the archer on quick combat. seven of them put to sleep. Nice.
All right. Okay, the broadsword, chainmail, and the flail. I forgot to detect magic to figure out which of these are special. The longbows, none of them are. It's been a while since I've taken this, so I can't quite remember either, but we can take the flail there. I guess we'll just take them all and test them out. Okay, that's the magic chainmail because it has the same, uh... armor class as my banded mail. Uh, 15 Thaco, that's going to be the magic broadsword, also damage 2d4 plus 1. So I... Some of the rest of these might be magical as well, but I don't believe they are. Let's go ahead and double check. Nope. Didn't think so. Yep. Pretty certain that I remembered only one of the, uh, that was magical. I need to get him a shield now. Uh, also a plus one broadsword. Good. Also a plus one broadsword. So yeah, all three of the broadswords are magic. Longbows weren't anything, though. Advantage to having plus one chainmail is that it takes up less encumbrance, uh, and it oh, I love it when one of the fighters rolls a lot less hit points than the rest. And gives a uh, base movement of 12. We'll go ahead and go in here. You don't need to do this and talk to this woman. Attacking her is a very bad idea. To the table is a ragged old woman. She greets you. Welcome. For the price of a few coppers, I will tell your fortune. Hey. The woman's hands make mystic passages while she mutters some words. Her voice undergoes a strange transformation. Blood and violence are writ boldly in your future. Look for friends where you expect enemies and enemies where you expect allies. The telling is finished. What do you do? We are going to leave. Attacking her is a bad idea. It, like, makes all of the enemies uh, super difficult. Okay, so yeah, adding my level created this many goblins for the random encounters now. That is the disadvantage to uh, doing it the way I did. But now we can sweep goblins, too. That's uh, something that is not to be underestimated. Yeah, it's still the best overall. probably going to surrender next turn. Nope, that's kind of surprising. All right. Having these extra enemies doesn't uh, do much either. Let's go back in here and memorize our sleep spells. One hit point of damage there. Excellent for there. Okay, so my mirror is. Oh, got surprised by goblins this time. already spread out too much for the sleep spells to be useful, so I'll just save them. 
The nice thing is with second level fighters, even though uh, now we're fighting even more goblins, goblins and kobolds will get hit by sweeps from uh, our fighters so we can take out as many as two a turn. The maximum amount of targets you sweep with a fighter is uh, equal to, they have to be considered Let's go ahead and have Lakia heal up Brandis, who took some hits. Otherwise, our hit points are fine. She's down about three. Brandis is down about four, I think. Okay. So I'll need the rest of a few days for Lakia, but... All right. Now, this is where about where we were before. There's the secret treasure room in the northwest corner. We find something written or hidden there. So let's see. Um... Yeah, now these are the areas that I haven't been through in, like, a couple of years, so. But this is a very powerful group of orcs. Orcs, unfortunately, are full hit die. They have to be less than a hit die to be vulnerable to a sweep. So it doesn't work on orcs. But goblins and kobolds, as well as certain buccaneers and basic militia guards we meet uh, later in the games. Oh, that's right, he's still alive. Well, he missed me. Oh, I need to uh, use her new flail, too. Forgot about that. Yep, they go 18, 1d6 plus 4. Basic damage for a flail against a, a normal or small-sized creature, which is what the default is for damage there. They don't mention when you, uh, whoops. They don't bother mentioning if what the damage is for large creatures, though you do, uh, it does have the rules for the first edition damage, different damage to large creatures, but flail is 1d6, and then you add one automatically for medium-sized, and you roll 2d4 damage against large creatures. I maybe should have gone ahead and kept it at 3,000 for the casual playthrough. 6,000 is what we settled on for now for uh, cycles for speedrunning, but... So it's pretty fast and makes everything a bit quicker, and you can sort of tell what's going on in combat, but... Uh... It's a little on the... ...incomprehensible side. Okay, now's a good time to use the second sleep spell. Should start surrendering now. There we go. Uh, nothing is worth getting here. Bozia took some damage. Just about everybody did. Should have cast my Bless spell again, I always forget to. Definitely want to before the next fight. These two-handed sword. well, I've already gone off the two-handed swords to broadsword, so they're not going to help much either. cast Bless before this battle against Knolls and an Ogre. If I get lucky, the Ogre will fall asleep. Okay, battle one. bit of gold is all we've got here, and then just the long swords and long bows of the hop goblins. Um, I'll go ahead and share out this money. 
I was certain there was treasure here in one of these parts, but not in this one, I guess. It's just one of the encounters we have to clear in order to clear the slums. Alright, so there... And then the Rope Guild are, I think, all I have left. Alright, it was fun going this far, but I'm going to be needing to use that going forward. So let's see, yeah, those two rooms and then the Rope Guild, and that's it. Oh, and the Mage. I need to go see the Mage. I forgot about him almost. Good thing I looked at that. But otherwise, yeah, I'm just about done. Yeah, I can have that open on that side. Maybe I'm that. Okay, 3200, so the Cleric can level, but nobody else can. Well, since we're here, let's go ahead and clear out this these two rooms. We can get a lot of arrows from these guys for our... Now normally if you have multiple attacks per round, you uh, use them all up and just do a single attack if you attack somebody who is helpless for the instant kill. But, uh, yeah, let's protect her. But sweeps uh, don't have that difficulty. Okay, get the rest of these archers to sleep. Pretty sure there's no treasure on uh, these guys. Yeah, we didn't get a huge amount of experience, so I know actually that we don't. And then there's the hit hidden loot is in the next room. Is apparently empty. You find a loose floorboard. You find a chest. Do you take it? Yes. All right, a shield and a magic user scroll with one spell, which is actually like a third level magic missile or something. So. Okay, so now the random counters are going to be even tougher because we have more minus armor class, but Merrimack is now buff and beefy. Alright, um... Oh, nice. Don't have to rest for days. Managed to do all the healing with the three spells I've got. Okay, let's go see the mage. Yep, now we're fighting work leaders. Let's see. These guys with their magic short bows, let's go ahead and uh, quick combat them as well. So they can take care of stuff for me. Want to be more careful with the cleric, and especially with the mage, who I want to uh, cast spells at specific points. Excellent.
Yeah, I can probably get one from here. Go ahead and uh, rest in here. Get our sleep spells back. Whoops. And our points. Surprised by goblins. I should be getting pretty close to the 15 battles, I think. her down since I'm not even planning on having her do anything. Yeah, we took a little bit of damage. Okay, you can try and fight him too. He's a difficult fight. I can't remember if he drops any good treasure. But for completing his quest, you don't have to fight him and he gives a lot of... Uh, useful random treasure and that's pretty much it so now we just have the slums and the random encounters so Doesn't look like uh, we're going to get at least a level for the mage, but I might be able to make third level. Uh, fighter before the. Uh, I need to rest. spells back. This would be a bad place to cast anyway, though. They're not in good positions. Okay, this is the entrance to the rope guild. This is a place we can rest, though. Now that I know that uh, you can go past the 15 normal by resting, I don't want to try to induce the encounters by resting.
Oh, that's, uh, this seems, that's right. Need to go into here first. <laughs> They're already surrendering. Nice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go home and... Oh, we're surprised by kobolds. That's fine. Kobolds are definitely better to see than, uh, better to see goblins and kobolds than orcs, definitely, and kobolds best of all. They have fewest hit points, lowest armor class, or highest armor class, I should say, because higher armor class is better in this, or is worse in this game. First and second edition rules for the win. I need to come up with 5,000 gold total in uh, what I've got here. Oops. Yeah, I can undo that. I said aim. I thought I said aim. Apparently I did not. Six platinum. Do I have stuff that's really sellable? My two-handed swords. If I decide to sell the broadswords and keep the two-handed swords, maybe. Um, or if I sell that. That's the problem is I don't have the money really to level too much. Okay, let's, uh... It's nice that scrolls come auto-identified, at least. I only have enough to level one character. Okay. Oh, although I do have a, a couple of gems now that we found in that loot. 50, 10, great. Well, hmm. I shouldn't be uh, doing it in this position. This is a bad place to uh, be looking for enemies because of the setup.
even casually if you're playing through this and doing it normally as I am doing now, it's definitely better to get your 15 encounters out of the way before you try to go into the rope guild for the last part. Because the encounters in there are much, much tougher. And it's actually not a bad idea to force all the encounters before you gather up too much stuff as well, because... Again, each level you get, each armor class that drops below zero, each extra hit point you have, all adds up to determining uh, the difficulty. Oh, I can't do that because of, uh, I'm melee range now. <laughs> to add more enemies and just make it longer and more annoying, and the experience you get is pretty minimal, so... Looks like that was the 15th, because uh, I've been searching for hours and haven't found anything, so that's awesome. Alright, so unfortunately, I really wanted to get more levels before doing the Rope Guild, but I can't unless I vendored the mysterious building that was once the Rope Guild. Whoever must venture into its twisty halls, most venture into its twisty halls, never return. Uh, but I might be able to level from the treasure here, so it's going to be slightly longer, but the fight with the trolls is rough, so... So, oh, oh, wait a moment, the man says. He hurries to the back of the booth and returns with the package. Here, he says. I've been only narrating off and on, I apologize, but Olo, the wizard we go to, you can attack him, or he tells you to get an item from here, which apparently is, uh, this guy's brewing up a special potion for him to use in his experiments, which maybe is a potion of youth or something, some sort of elixir of immortality. You can't actually do anything with it regardless, though, except, uh, no. Wrong place. I need to go down here. Okay, this is so low. All right. What is this money? 150 platinum and one jewelry. Well, that might be enough if we're lucky to level everybody. Clear that out. And a glaive guizarm. Which I don't know if I want to keep or not. It is a plus one weapon, and would actually be decent against the trolls, perhaps. But it also could be money to help me uh, level. Six thousand. Okay, I'll take that. I saved for the same thing to, uh... 282. Now we all have enough to level. She cannot quite level yet based on experience, but uh, everybody else can. Soon we'll have more money than we can really use. We could go buy fine longbows or something with it, but generally I don't think it's so that much worth it. I could also hire a uh, adventurer to help out with the fight against the trolls and then possibly kill him, but I'd rather just not worry about hiring people. I ought to also get magic missiles memorized for that fight because the sleep spells generally aren't all that useful. They might work on the ogres, but there are only two ogres and four trolls, and that's where all the trouble is, so it's better to damage up the trolls with magic missiles. Um, let's see. Okay, let's take a look at this wave. Glaive Guizarm. Just plus one, kind of figured. Five hundred platinum left. That's actually still plenty, so... Yeah, let's identify all these so I remember what they are. Don't have to remember all that much, but... Since I don't have shields anyway, yet. 
Although now would be a decent time to go buy them as well. Just give her the... She's running out of arrows, though that's, uh, whoops. I know that that's the case. A couple of those fights I used to get uh, more arrows from as well. In order to avoid another encounter, I still have to uh, go into a room. Let's see. Some of the inside rooms are totally safe. I know one where I always farm up the encounters in the, uh, but anywhere you've had encounters I know are safe. Let's go to memorize those. Okay, um, not going to be useful in the coming fight, but we'll go ahead and get those ready for now. Let's go finish off the slums. I forgot to save and use Blessed before this. Wonderful me. Glaive Glee's arm does more damage to big creatures, which is the nice thing about it, um, actually. Well, I saved a little bit ago, so that's uh, nice at least. Um, okay. Trolls can't get to us now because of these ogres. Alright, we'll take care of them really quick. Trolls regenerate, so I want to be able to focus damage on them once they appear. Alright. She's almost useless. Let's see if we can do chip damage with that. Okay, another troll down. I think I'm standing where all the trolls are. Oh, that's bad. Okay, you have a lot of hit points. Not anymore. Okay, we're done. Whew. The fight. That will enable us to get third level with the wizard. A build wizard now, hammer. Hammers are better to get rid of because uh, they and a magic user spell that is not identified. Okay. Oops. Uh, sleep spells will be good for the next part of the game. Trolls are tossing around boxes and break them all when we come in and they're like, Oh, we need something new to play with. They spot us and say, I've got an idea. Goodness. Okay, there we go. 
All right, slums are completed. Same proclamations, I believe, outside the clerk's office. Council Clerk begins looking through a stack of papers. Before I can offer you commissions, I must see if you are due for a current reward. Your clearing of the slum areas permits us to expand. Here's your reward. 450 EXP. Modest amount of gold, platinum, and a jewelry piece. And offer the following. So-called keep on Thorn Island must be cleared. Council's offering reward for books, maps, tomes, etc., which provide useful information about Flan before the fall. Reward is tied to the value of the information. Weapon of great power is to be auctioned by our enemies. The auction is to be held in Potal Plaza. Find out when the weapon is and return. Luckily, the uh, the auction happens whenever you decide to go visit Potal Plaza. All right, build we's arm plus one, a hammer plus two. Oh uh, well. That's going to provide me a lot of money, because hammers, just if you go quick combat with them, they automatically throw them, so I'd prefer not to if I don't have to. Uh, Bill Gui's arm is probably going to be more damage than a uh, broadsword for now. I could buy normal shields, but I'm just going to go ahead and use these, rather than uh, be a little bit different, more interesting than my previous playthroughs. Okay, and that's it. Now we identify this. Two spells. We'll have to see what those are. We'll go ahead and buy some arrows for our stock people. Okay, um, not quite enough to level everyone. Luckily, not everyone can level anyway. <laughs> they also have a jewelry. I'm surprised that that's all I got for selling those other uh, magic items, too. Bilgui's huh. arm apparently is uh, a bit broken in its damage. 2d4 plus 1 is all it does? Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have sold that. So I need to get a replacement weapon for him as soon as possible. Luckily we'll find some good ones on so-called keep. And he's going to be using his bow mostly anyway, so that's not a very, very big deal. Actually, since she's further in the back, I think I'll go ahead and swap out. Just need to remember to, uh... Cut this off, because... Bilgui's arm, for some reason, does not have a, uh, attack bonus for the, uh, for strength. There are a few coding errors like that in the game that, uh, don't have to worry about very often, but... Okay, that should... Okay, it's got us all enough to train another level now, so I can train the Cleric and the Mage. Cleric already to level 4, I'm pretty sure. Yep. But she maxes out at 6 and then can't go any farther, which is... Uh... It's like that. I think it's same with the Wizard. The Magic user. Alright, Stinking Clouds, the preference there.
Okay, time to go to Sokal Key. On Thorn Island, Bos disembarks. Now, we'll go ahead and look at this. Skeleton of a long dead elf lies hidden by rocks and reeds. Its weapons and equipment are badly rusted and corroded by salt. Its leathers are worm eaten and crusted in dirt. Go ahead and search it. In a pouch of the remains is a crumbling parchment scroll with the words, The last part is eaten away. So, these are translated as Lux, Shestni, and Samoset. Uh, but no indication of what they're used for. What they're used for, of course, if you've watched my speedruns or played the game, you know, you know that they are the passwords to let the undead leave you alone uh, of various sorts. Now, there's a magic hammer we can sell in one of the, in this side room over here with some frogs. Not in the lower amount, it's in this upper one. Yes. 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 Goodness. Leave me alone. Giant frogs. Oh, I need to, uh... We'll worry about that later. I need to check the spells of that, uh... Ah, where's the hammer? It's in the corner. Oh, here it is. Worth a surprisingly few amount of XP compared to a lot of the magic items. All right, time for the big battle. Without fireballs to wipe them out quickly, this will be uh, quite an interesting struggle. cast whole person on them too if I wanted. But you can only get up to three of them and there's so many and um, they die pretty quickly anyway. Actually I'm just gonna quick combat you too. Got to buy more darts for her, that's fine, I can do that later. So what spells are on here? Invisibility, invisibility, 10 foot radius. Okay. Not super duper useful. Dust of Disappearance is the only invisibility that really matters much, because invisibility goes away when you attack. So it would allow you to not be hit by spells for like the first round of combat. But they would still charge in and attack you, because invisibility doesn't prevent them from knowing where you are, it only prevents them from being targeted by ranged attacks. Dust of Disappearance, they are also triggered to ignore you, unless you're in melee combat. That's how invisibility rings function, at least. I think they let you move around without being countered, uh, if you have that first two, but that's about it. The annoying thing about hammers, hand axes, and other items that are qualified as throwable and melee weapons is that they do function in either purpose, but if you use them at range, the AI loves to use them at range and then they're gone, but they turn up in the inventory and you have to re-loot them after combat is over. Yay, she defeated an enemy.
Okay, now they've gathered up here, she can go and put another six to nine asleep. With her second spell. And looks like we'll get six to eight here. That's the best one to do. Yay, got all eight of them. Oh, and the rest are already surrendering. They're like, well, we know that this is done now. Okay, that's those are the only battles that we should have to worry about here. On a, on a hop goblin body, you find a note that you copy in your journal as journal entry 57. Ratty piece of parchment with large writing on one side. Our spies in the city inform us that a party of invaders will travel to so-called Keep to free it. To combat these invaders, assemble a force of no less than three squads. Travel by boat from the small docks at the west of town to Thorin Island. Move undetected to So-Call Keep. Find the adventurers in or around So-Call Keep. Kill them before they can return to the city council with information about the true situation at the Keep. Return with the invaders' heads as proof of completion of your mission. Upon completion, you'll be rewarded with food, treasure, and many slaves. Signed, The Boss. This building is filled with broken, splintered wood. The remains of the bunks and chests of the original defenders. Seems everything's been well looted. Mist rises and thickens into numerous shadowing figures. From these figures rises a low moaning. Ghostly shapes screech out a dreadful, keening howl. You say Lux to them, one of the passwords you got. You have no way of knowing which of the passwords are right for it, which situation uh, without trial and error or having the clue book tell you. The haunts burst into a chorus of howls, moans, complaints, wails, and other lamentations over their fate and the fate of their families. They were the original defenders of the keep before the cleric spells inadvertently bound them to this place. One spirit's voice rises above the rest. An account of our trials is within the diary, he points to a floorboard. Beneath the floorboard, you find some gems and a few pages of a diary. You copy these pages into your journal as entry three. Do you take the gems? Natch. How many do we got? Five gems? Okay. Not a huge amount. Uh, journal entry three, was it? It's one of the neat things that the companion is supposed to do is display the journal entries on screen, which would be pretty neat. Because then, uh... They could actually be read by, by as well, but unfortunately I can't get Goldbox Companion to work. An old leather-bound book written with a small, firm hand. The hordes came again last night. Their coordination was frightening. Under the cover of darkness, goblins and kobolds pushed bundles of sticks to within bow range. These bundles formed a wall that protected the small ones from our archers. Once the walls erected, orc archers took up safe positions there and began pelting the castle walls with arrows. We tried shooting flaming arrows at the wall of sticks to set it afire. Monsters are normally afraid of fire, but these monsters showed no fear. They simply scooped dirt on the flames to put them out. Before all the fires were out, they had resumed firing at us. Surely some unnatural force must have been at work to weld these quarrelsome beasts into an organized fighting force. I do not know if we can combat the monster's onslaught much longer. We lost more than 12 men last night. The monsters seem to have an unlimited number of reinforcements. The last priest of Tyr, Ferran Martinez, says he has a way to protect the keep, but he says that it's so terrible that it may only be used as a last resort. Unless we receive reinforcements shortly, Ferran Martinez is our only hope. So let's go meet Fran Martinez. This was once the chapel of the keep. Inside the doorway are the dried husks of two orcs, their faces twisted with terror. Large altar dominates the southern wall. A pale form rises before you. Relax. The shape speaks. I am the life form of Farron Martinez, bound with the undead spirits of all who die within these walls to guard the keep. Tell me, has the city been freed? You tell the truth, and he says, The city fell long ago to the unblessed creatures imbued with the might of a magical pool. Chief among these were Tyranthraxus, Edronka, and Torath. With their powers they ruled and united all else, striving forward to destroy us all. The sage Mendor worked hard to gather record of all these things, but they are lost now, his library overrun. To find help for your battles, you should pass through the illusionary wall in the armory on this keep of this keep. To pass my guards on the way out, speak the word Samosud. Now we are freed, our duty done. Farron fades away. 
So if you do this before you talk to the ghosts, those other ghosts in that room have also been freed, so you have to look for the diary yourself. Passing through an illusionary wall, you enter portion and keep the remains unoccupied. Whoops. And equipment. 333 experience. Okay, so another plus one shield. So we'll go ahead and take that, the long sword. We'll go ahead and give you the mace, and we'll transfer her flail over to uh, the other character. Another suit of chainmail. Good to have Ron. Or maybe we'll, let's see. Trade flail to Randis. Drop, that should be fine now. Yeah, he's still got just a broadsword, so. Flail actually does more damage than a broadsword to larger creatures, so it would be better. Uh, Bill Glee's arm, we're just going to sell. Wave Glee's arm. We'll trade that to Randis for now. Sell that, and then we will go ahead and let Lakia. Lakia's running forward, and she needs to plus two, so we'll go ahead and. That'll be a little more helpful for her. And give. Oh, wait, no. Want to get the flail plus one to Randis. Yeah. No. No, it is to Char. Right. So now she has a uh, plus one weapon that's decent. I have two people with minus two armor class, the equivalent of wearing plate mail shield in our dexterities. Doesn't reset, but we found the old armory weapon stand in the northwest corner. I have no idea why they have to change the password after we have talked to him. That's the weirdest thing about it, especially since that word is also in the list of words you can translate too. So it's like, why? Eh, whatever. Okay, that's all that's interesting in the keep. There are a couple more fights, but there's there's a room full of fungi that can poison you, apparently. There are scorpions that can poison you, which is instant death. We don't want to deal with those, so not going to worry about them. Board a boat. We'll be able to level the fighters after we turn in. Probably not the uh, mage yet. Sleep spells will still be useful. We'll keep doing sleep. Proclamation 101, I think, is one that we haven't seen yet. Be it known that the council, knowing that commerce is the life's blood of New Flan, has decreed that so-called keep is to be cleared of all unlawful inhabitants, which we just did. Word is offered to the person or persons who successfully carry out this commission. All interested in applying shall present themselves to the clerk of the city council. Which we already did. They automatically turn you to the south, and I sometimes forget that. Though usually I've been used to it with the uh, thing. Clerk speaks with so-called keep in our hands. We can use boats to bypass the Barren River. Here is your reward. On well, matters of commission, I can offer the following. Interested in tomes. Weapon of great powers to be auctioned. Junior Councilman Cardona has a special commission for you. His chambers are through the east door. When Old Van was overrun, a family treasure was hidden in the western building of the textile complex. The faithful servant sent to fetch it never returned. Complex is just south of Podol Plaza. Bring the treasure to me and you will be well rewarded. 
So now we have the quest for the four blocks on the other side, on this side of the river. I should say, not the other side, this side. Okay, she isn't going to have experience to level, but the four warriors can level now. Let's go ahead and do that. Jara and Merrimack are way falling behind in uh, hit points. That's a bit unfortunate. Level 4, and even with his plus 4 constitution hit points, he's not even averaging 10 hit points a level. If he's to get, uh, if he was to get, he barely hit 100 if he got nearly max or max for the next 5 levels, at which point you stop rolling dice and just get plus 3 per. There, these two are decent. They're averaging 12 hit points a level, which is very good. Okay, next thing we're going to do is Kuto's Well. Oh, I forgot to uh, check on some of these weapons and stuff, but oh well. Surprised Party of Blizzard Man. Random encounters don't matter much for most of the rest of the game, and again, they don't give a whole lot of experience, so we're mostly going to be just skipping them. Alright, so there are a couple of inner kobold guards that'll be in places. But uh, there's one little source of treasure we can go get that I generally skip in uh, the speedruns now. Even It's not required for clearing the well, so even in 100% we skip it. There's a lot of treasure stuff that isn't really necessary, so we don't bother with them in speedruns. But uh, this is right here. Let's go ahead and cast... Yeah, she prefers melee to, uh, oh, that's right, that's the uh, wrong person. I was thinking that was Shara, not, uh, like, yeah. Um, sleep doesn't work well here, so she's just going to not get involved. wide-eyed woman is seated on a rug. At your entry she stands. Greetings, bold ones. I have long awaited your coming. My time here is short, for the world enters a new age. An evil spirit from an unholy pool guides your enemies and hides behind a fair countenance. Be not deceived. With that, the woman is gone. Beneath the rug, you find a compartment containing arms and armor. Do you take them? Of course we do. Okay, banded male plus one here is very solid. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, give him the banded mail plus one and do hand-me-downs. Uh, quarterstaff and bracers are both for the mage. That's pretty much worthless. Bracers sell for a lot, so now that I have better bracers, the 6,000 will give me enough for a level as well. Uh, oh, he already has chain mail plus one. Could have sold that for a small amount of money, but whatever. He might automatically prefer the broadsword to the glaive Guizarm arm because uh, it only calculates based on regular damage and such, and they're identical, so he might just prefer that automatically. But it should be more against... I can't remember quite how much it does to uh, 
large creatures, but I know that the broadsword doesn't actually do a lot to large creatures, especially compared to most swords. It's only like 1d6. You have to keep this area free of intruders. Boss's orders. We'll let you go this time, but if you come back, you'll face big trouble. Okay, unlike the slums, you can't rest in those round places, even if you clear out an area. So that's good to know. Um, let's go ahead and... I have very good armor class now and a decent quarterstaff, so she can do okay in melee too. Especially against just little kobolds. Second band comes up. She's not hitting this time. You climb down. You want to climb up the rungs? No. Pass into hidden catacombs, large room is dimly lit by sputtering torches, so the smoke you can see curtains hung to cover doorways. Some movement occurs in the room's far quarter, and then a volley of arrows tears into the group. It takes two damage. That's pretty rare to take damage in this spot. Okay. You are surrounded by the bandit band of the infamous Norris the Grey. You dare to invade my halls? He snarls. Surrender or die. Okay. We have chosen you will die. I should have done in the middle. Maybe I'd get some lizard men. It was worth a shot. choking gag. That's nice. Okay, he actually has a magic uh, long sword. I can't remember if his chainmail is magic. Long swords are one of the best damaging weapons in the game. I don't think his chainmail is magic, but we'll go ahead and check it out really quick. Nope, didn't think so. Long sword, though. Magic. 1d8 plus 7 does 1d12 against uh, large monsters, so pretty hefty amount of damage there. On the leader's body, you find a curious message that you place in your journal as Entry 50. An official looking notice. Assemble a group of at least 30 of your followers. Meet up with the Hobgoblin Assault Force at the small docks to the west of town. You and your group will be under the command of the Hobgoblin leader. Follow his orders. Upon completion of the mission, you'll be rewarded with food, treasure, and many slaves. Signed, The Boss. Scribbled on the back of these orders is Norris the Grey's unsent reply to the boss. I will never follow the orders of a hobgoblin. I don't go on missions until I know exactly what we're supposed to do. And I don't go on missions for an unknown amount of food, treasure, and slaves. I do go on missions where I am in command, where I know exactly what the target is, and where I know exactly how much I'll get paid. Don't send me another order until you can meet my terms. Signed, Norris the Grey. So from the look of things, he wanted him to join in the assault force that uh, was supposed to stop us at Sokal Keep, which would have made a more difficult fight, but... You've defeated the dreaded bandit gang and rid Flan of a great evil. The honest settlers will cheer your deeds. You've also taken possession of a hideout, in which you may rest undisturbed from the rigors of your questing. So that's nice. 
found the bandit's treasure. Do we take it? Yes. 2300 silver, 92 gold, and 20 gems. It's a lot of silver, which is mostly just going to weigh us down, but it'll turn into a decent amount of platinum, and the gems, of course, are good. So now we can rest anywhere underground here, and don't have to worry about any more encounters. So unfortunately, the well itself never gets fully cleared, so you stop getting random encounters here. So let's see. Um, before we do Mendor's Library, I need to get a Nox spell, though. Uh, Vazia can go up to 4th level to get Nox, so we'll have to go and turn that in, and then we can go back to Mendor's Library next. Which is a dangerous place, mostly because of the Basilisk and the Spectre. Couple of treasure spots in Mendor's Library as well that we can find, though. So. But I'll get to 4th level, I'll be able to learn the Knock spell and get us in and out of the library. Um, I'm going to do Magic Missile to quickly kill the... Uh... Technically, I could use the kill both the Basilisk and the Spectre a little more easily. Uh, let's go ahead and scribe both of these. Oh, I'm not 5th level yet, so I can't scribe that one. Let's see, 126 and 110. Be it known that the Council is offering a reward for all books and tomes containing information about the fall of Flan. Amount of said reward to be dependent upon the value of the information provided. These proclamations basically tell you the same thing that she does, your commissions and stuff, but, uh... Be it known that the Council is seeking a stalwart band to undertake a mission of particular sensitivity. Any brave and clever band of adventurers who do not, who are not adverse to earning a large reward should present themselves to the Council Clerk for a special commission. Which is probably a reference to either the uh, Poldo Plaza or the mission or uh, Cordona's textile house. But it doesn't really matter. You see... For the most part, they kind of point you in the right direction, but they start with a couple talking about Volingen's graveyard, and that's like the last place you want to go in the game before entering the uh, main keep and all that. The council is awarded a bonus for your eliminating Norris the Grey. Here is your reward. 200 platinum, 250 gold, not bad. That's enough for one uh, level up. Um, maps, tomes, weapon of great power, summoned by the bishop at Brachio of Tyr. Report to him at Tyr's temple. Okay, so we could go ahead and go do that now. Alright, let's go ahead and identify all of our items. enough to level everybody almost twice. Um, I think the mage is the only one who can level now. We learn not. Yeah. 
she's not rolling well for levels either. You only get D4 with mages in first and second editions, so... But uh, even her constitution still guarantees 8 for the levels, so she's only rolled 9. Four, so 5 on 3 hit dice. 1, 2, and 2. Or maybe 1, 1, 3. Unfortunately, uh, one of the other reasons why I don't consider it it's such a bad thing to max out your stats anyway, because random hit point rolls are still a thing, and you can get really unlucky with those. I guess you could save and then reload after you level if you get a bad roll there, but that uh, sounds unappealing. Hmm, Bloodthirsty Lizard Man wants to kill me. Too bad. Luckily, we're about to enter the library, and the library we can rest just fine, so. 235 experience for everyone but her. Oops. Goodness, Randus took a lot of damage, too. I forgot to memorize all those heals. Knock. You have a very small chance of bashing the door, but uh, it can take forever, so... You can protect yourself if you get mirrors, but it's easier just to, uh... That's not really worth it as far as I'm concerned. Moldering books are stored on shelves, a sign of the entrance reads rhetoric. You hear a hiss. Ooh, awesome, it caught to go first. That's unusual. Nine damage. She's doing two missiles that do two to five each guaranteed, so wow. All right, that worked out well. All right, now there's a cloak of displacement. Maybe I should be giving most of the best stuff to Havron instead, but he should be fine regardless, even with uh, slightly lower hit points. Now that he has a minus five armor class, he's going to be uh, really tough to kill. Um, potions. Clerical scroll. I wonder what those are. I'll have to look at it after. Restoration. I would rather just reroll after taking damage from an undead. I mean, it's kind of hard to avoid, you could argue, but restoration is such a pain to deal with. Okay, so we have three books in. The history section and two in the philosophy that we really want. History of the North it is mostly written to please a royal line. There's an interesting passage which you copy into your journal as entry eight. Luckily for the speedrun, the ones that are good are identified by journal entries. Rugged popular account of the northern lands. Ten days ride north of the Varm is a barren and dead country called the Lewi. Land in pain, or land of caused pain. Further to the south is this place is known as the Tortured Land. It is said to be an evil place, shunned by the riders. They speak little of this land, but yearly during chess 
They make a trip into its heart. There they go to praise the spirit of a glowing spring. They have done this for ages, and so shall they do for years to come. Yes, we take it. We find Lex Geographica, an atlas drawn by Tomaris. It is a map of land which, though old, still could be useful. It becomes entry 37 in your journal. You take it? Yes. There are very few false maps, so the important maps uh, in the journal you can use even without finding this. Other, uh, so it's in the middle of the journal. But fortunately, it's not easy for me to show, but maybe useful to know the blocks and stuff. Let's see, look. Find the Grand Historian's Records of the Arts of War. In it, you find a useful passage which you copy into your journal as entry 21. Journal entry 21. A crumbling old book, one of a massive series. At this time, there ruled the twisted, there ruling the twisted ones was a powerful general named Tyranthraxus. He strode before his armies cloaked in flame and led the riders out of the waste. At his hand, the kingdom of Bars was conquered. Turning south, he led his army to conquer the Horeb and the Vein. Tyranthraxus was a cruel man and leveled all that he had taken, murdering the princes of these lands. But the flame that surrounded him consumed him, destroying his body. Freed of its shell, it flew among the men of his army, lighting on each and claiming it. It was then where Baron Schalt imprisoned Tyranthraxus in a vial of water which shone like the light of day. This he sank in the watery depths of Lake, Lake Longreach, re defeating the armies Tyranthraxus had raised. So lots of clues throughout the early game that the big villain you're going to be dealing with is Tyranthraxus. There's library stacks, old moldering books, you store on shelves, sign where the entrance leads, philosophy, book entitled Meditations. Nah, I'm gonna be fine on money, I'm not gonna take the crappy stuff. You find Fier Detha's discourses on power. Among all the dry texts, you find an interesting passage, which you copy into the journal as entry 7. Tightly bound scroll, seemingly immune to the ravages of time. Fountains and pools hold great power that can only be reached by performing proper ceremonies. Most sure of these is immersion, for in this way the bather surrenders himself to the spirit of the water. That spirit, or some portion of it, enters into the bather, whereby he gains great powers. Woe to the weak-willed, whose spirits are sure to be consumed by spirits that put even the strong at great risk. Urax holds that the falls of Ixi are the greatest of all of these. Morden writes that the Pool of Radiance, title drop, is greater still. Later in the book, places of magical power are not necessarily tied to one physical location. Power often moves from plane to plane among the path of least resistance. The termination of the path determines the place's location on this plane. Volatile upheavals between the planes may lead to a change in the path of least resistance. This can change where the path terminates on this plane, thus moving the place of power. Some who wield strong supernatural forces can bend the path like an engineer damming a river. When the path is bent, it can terminate in a new location, moving the place of power on this plane. If the supernatural force that bent the path is removed, the path will snap back to its original form and place, the place of power will return to its original location. Such disruption can have violent and unpredictable results. Thus, interplanar upheavals and directed supernatural forces may hold the answer to the seemingly ever-changing location of places of power, such as the Pool of Radiance. One last book to read here. Harmony of the Rock? No. Strom's Discussions of Poetics? No. Chronicles of Aram? No. You find Ergen's description of darkness. There's an account of his imprisonment in the lower realms. There's a passage of interest which you copy as entry 19 in your journal. A black bound tome written in a strange halting hand. And settled foremost in the hall of minor courtiers were the lesser powers. Marum of the Great Spear. Hosk, voice of Hargut. Tyranthraxus, the Flamed One. Borum of the Lake of Boiling Mud, and Camnod the Unseen, these two fell down and became servants of the great Lord Bane. Oh, that was all. Alright. A few other places of interesting, uh, Loot here. Oops, skip that message. 
Okay, librarian's chamber. You see a ruined room with rotted furniture. Human bones lie scattered around the desk. There's a jar under the floorboards. With three potions in it. Okay, we need to identify those. find a fighter with battered armor and wild eyes cowering in the corner. Yay! Mercy! Mercy! He cries. And then is suddenly, die! Die! You late slime from the pit! He'll just cause problems if you take him back to town, so it's best to ignore him. Watching you warily, he inches away. When he is out of sword's reach, he scrambles to his feet and flees the room. Buried amid all the trash, you see a book. Do you take it? Yes. Okay, this is a manual. It is a manual of bodily health and is supposed to increase our constitution, but it's kind of bugged, so if you have already uh, 18 constitution or higher, it doesn't quite work until you do some weird things, so I'll just use it, whatever. There are some kobolds in the storeroom who, if we uh, are nice to them, they'll give us a map to the Cardona textile house, which is another journal entry. Not going to bother with that, though, as I've already told you what it is, so that's all that matters. Now... We are going to be uh, having to deal with the specter of the librarian who is going to haunt us. For taking the books without a library card. Ouch, Randus got hit, which means he got level drained, which means I'm not dealing with it. Unfortunately, he kind of comes as a surprise, so he automatically gets to attack first. He didn't hit this time, which is good. Unfortunately, I think he's too uh, strong to turn with... Oh, but wow, we killed him that quickly with our guys on auto. Okay. You have to use the knock spell to get out as well, unfortunately. But now we're done with Mendor's library. Uh, what's experience looking like? 13k. I'm not that worried about the cleric. Now, I think the cleric can level up, but uh, I think I'll clear out the next two areas first. Um... I'll go ahead and ignore the top half, especially since I don't have uh, a thief in the party for this. This is one point in the game where a thief is moderately useful. Now it's just a matter of, no, I can get more elsewhere. I will take it unopened. I will roleplay the good people who are nice, even though I know that the guy we're, we're, who asked us to do this is an evil scumbag. Um, should have prepped some sleep spells again, actually. I can actually do that here. Library is perfectly safe. Actually, I'll keep the uh, magic missiles.
Because I can use those against that. Yeah, I'll memorize one sleep spell. Stinking clouds are actually moderately useful at this point. Okay. Shouldn't need to worry about Nox spell for the rest of the game, but there's almost no other way to get into the library unless you, like, use a potion of giant strength. We'll go ahead and go collect the NPC here. Um, is this... this might actually be... How many do we have? Right there? Yeah, let's go ahead and sleep then. Ooh, only got three. That's an unfortunate roll plus uh, slightly tough enemies. Should be surrendering soon. Nope, didn't get a chance to. Things seem strangely quiet. The drum has faded to silence. You're in a large room which serves as a crude temple and causes a vague feeling of disquiet. Top of bone altar, there's the hobgoblin priestess. We can cast hold person on us, so I actually should have cast hold person on her. As well as others. If we damage her, she won't get to cast, though, so magic missile, that's a reason to have those ready as well. Magic Missile didn't finish her. That's very unfortunate. Okay, she's done. Probably should get a morale break soon. Maybe not. Maybe these ones are immune to morale. Oh, she's shooting gonna attack me anyway. Let me attack back. Um, she has some stuff, so... Magic user scrolls. The stone statuette, I can't remember if it's magic or not. Potion, brass key... The necklace, I think most of this is trash, but I'll go ahead and take it, just in case. It's actually useful to have a Detect Magic spell memorized on your Cleric for these instances. Mostly I figured I can remember what they are, but uh, since I'm actually hitting obscure areas I haven't dealt with in a while, I don't quite remember, so... Alright, the Brass Key is important because that allows us to let this NPC out and into the party. Um, we do, as well as you encounter hobgoblins. Bond with a piercing battle cry. Uh, you're going to wait in the back. So you're out of magic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and hold the uh, leaders. Can't target that one, that's too bad. I'll just do two more of the too far away thing.
You're in a very small dark room. A muscular man locked in chains lies here. Near him is a page that you place in your journal under entry 47. Sorry, we know that you're all chained up, but first we've got to check this paper and write it in our journal. Give us a second. A small wrinkled parchment with roughly scratched notes. Hobgoblins transferred out of Valhavo Castle, now replaced by giants and trolls. Sounds very tough. Stagenau Gate, guarded by bugbears and Ettons. Heard Ettons didn't like light. Must be charmed or controlled. Sounds tough. Some smugglers sneaked supplies through Stogenau Gate to the boss. Must check it out. Overheard hobgoblins say a dragon scared them into leaving a nice lair in the mountains out east. Couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of creeps. What do you do with the man? Free him. How will you free him? Unlock. The brass key you found opens all the padlocks. Parley, nice. Thanks for freeing me. I'm Lord Cadorna's servant. Add him to your party? Great. My name is Skull Crusher. There's a secret door to the southeast. That's where I met the hobgoblin leader. Okay, who did I give the scale armor to? Did I give everything to Vazia? I did. That's funny. Um, let's see. Let's see if this armor is actually any good. If not, I can give it to him. Two, so that's pretty regular for scale mail. Nothing special. Yeah, movement six. I don't have a weapon for him, though. I forgot to pick one of those up. That's a bit unfortunate. He's also a level 4 fighter with only 39 hit points, so he's almost as unlucky as us. Is this another plus one quarter staff? It's a regular quarter staff. Well, I can give that to him so he has a weapon at least. All fighters are proficient with all weapons in the gold box games, so 26 plus 4, Thaco 15, he'll be fine. Move him to the front. You can't control NPCs in uh, the first couple of gold box games, so. Let's see if we can actually memorize our spells. Do I want sleep spells or magic missiles? One and two, maybe. Scorpions approach hungrily, that's kind of bad. But I did manage to uh, memorize the spells. Okay, nope. Got that insta-kill death from poison that I'm always afraid of getting in speedruns. Oops, that's uh, not the right one. I'm doing the Steam version. So unfortunately there's no safe places to rest. Where did I save at? I did save before... Uh, resting, so that's good at least. So we'll just have to deal with the last fight with the resources we've got. There's a few other flavor things you can visit, places where Skull Crusher killed a Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin Young, which is depressing to think about. Uh, other things, but nothing very interesting in the textile house here. This is, in the east wall is the secret door, says Skull Crusher. If we go through, we can surprise them. Let's go ahead and cast our Bless spell. You see the chief of the hobgoblins, a huge ogre. As you enter, he rises to his full ten feet of height. 
His head wreathed in the flickering shadows. Puny creatures, he bellowed. I allowed you to toy with my minions, but now I'll crush the life from your limbs. All right. Um... Ooh, lucky for uh, chokes. How far can I reach? I can get those two. It doesn't work on ogres because they're giants, not humanoids. Well, person only works on humanoids. So the bad thing about uh, the AI here is the good news is that your AI on auto combat will not run into stinking cloud. Bad news is neither will the enemy. Okay. That's what I wanted. Now, I can throw a stinking cloud here. And the ogre choked and gagged. Awesome. That's what we wanted to see. Crusher's down to 12 hit points, that's fine. Um, I don't think that I care that much about any of the money here. Yeah, just a lot of copper for the most part. Items, long swords and long bows. I could, like, give Skull Crusher a long sword, I guess. You find an iron box across the lock is the seal of the family of Cadorna. Opening the box will damage the seal beyond repair. We're gonna go ahead and take an unopened. We could get a gauntlet of ogre power inside it, which would be really awesome. Most of the rest of the stuff is just stuff you can sell for okay money. Uh, that's been save after that battle. Um, yeah. Actually, slipping into here would be pretty good. Actually, work really well for all of those. Man, eh, not right now, at least. start to use magic missile for these at least. Okay, don't care that much about skull crusher, so. Guys, the party is monsters. There's a few interesting things you can do here.
There is a minor temple of Bane, which we can fight minions of Bane. That's not great. We can go fight a uh, buccaneer and get magic items off his body. There's also a secret temple of Illmater, which uh, can give us all the usual rewards if we go in there. But it's magic lock, so you, that's another place you need knock for. Who are you? It's uh, better to be haughty or abusive to monsters to get them to leave you alone rather than nice, which I didn't understand as a child. I was always a good guy and wanted to be nice. You have entered a crowded tavern. You open the door and into a drunk buccaneer. He glares at you. One of you shall pay for this insult. Who will it be? Oh, I guess we should have challenged him. Oh, well. They're both helpless. Great. Fortunately, no, actually, I can probably. Fourth little fighter, take it down one hit. Voila. This should be the last combat we really need to worry about here, so. surrendering. Okay, that's his magical longsword and chainmail, I believe. Those four long swords belong to the goblins, I'm sure. The auctioneer cries, Creatures of all ages, welcome to this auction for an item both magical and powerful. It's either a wand or a staff. Stand and listen. Escalates to 5,000 gold pieces. High bid from a man in plain clothes next to an ogre. Wait for the winner. Going, going, gone, the auctioneer cries. The man and ogre exchange the wand into a large bag. They disappear into the crowd. And that's it. That's all you need to do. You don't have to hear what it is, but apparently it's a wand of paralyzation. Um, wait. Nope, I'm too high up. I need to go. Here is the entrance. Yeah. Now we're back at Kuto's Well. Surprised by lizard men right at the exit. How unfair. One last battle for the Skull Crusher. Um, did I memorize some more spells? I'll go ahead and... We'll be resting soon. I'll go ahead and use up my magic missiles. Minimum damage. Nice. Oh, they killed Skull Crusher. Too bad. Four left. Nice.
You are by the gateway to the unsealed area. The City Watch eyes you suspiciously. The City Watch stops you and removes Kadorna's treasure from your keeping. Tell your reward waits with the City Clerk. So we can't talk to yet because, uh... Um, probably a little bit longer, maybe another half hour. Proclamation 134. Be it known that the council has declared those individuals who have taken up residence in the mansions of the former Koval family to be traitors and thieves. Be it further known that a reward has been offered for the elimination of these outlaws. A commission to rid the city of this blight may be obtained from the council clerk. Not a problem. A lot less stressful to play the game casually than to worry about speedrunning this. It's hard to get in the mindset for it. Yeah. All right, so we cleared all the blocks on this side of the river except for the final areas, the uh, gates and the the gate, Stajanau Gate, and the castle itself. Now, Skull Crusher would normally leave your party as soon as you enter, but because uh, this is actually a way you can keep him in the party by having him be unconscious. But, uh... You're outside the clerk's office. Guards posted around a door in the south wall. Watch you closely. He begins looking through a stack of papers. I'm going to see if you're due to reward. Here's a reward for clearing the library. I find these discourses valuable. Here's your reward. Council will be amused by the descriptions. Here is your reward. These maps shall help us locate several legendary buildings. Here is your reward. These histories can much useful information. Here is your reward. The records provide insights into much that was puzzling. Here is your reward. Your success at Pulled Plaza is noted. Here is your reward. You might get more reward if you actually listen more closely, take those options, and hear about what the wand is. Councilman Kadorna left this payment for some services you has rendered. Here is your reward. 20 gems. I must bring to your attention the following concerning Valingen Graveyard. Undead from the graveyard have grown more dangerous than all of the other forces which confront us. I have been authorized to give you an enchanted weapon if you accept the commission and the graveyard menace. Do you accept? Yes. Along with a bunch of scrolls of restoration. So this will be good for Randis. Plus one to ended sword is one of the highest damage weapons we can have. Uh, I'll take the clerical scrolls. I guess for an emergency I can use the restoration. Uh, once we're near max level, it's less of a problem to be using the Scrolls of Restoration because it puts you at like minimum XP for that level. So you still end up losing a bunch of experience if you get hit by it, which is why I'd rather just reload than deal with uh, try to deal with that. Matter of commission, I can offer the following. Large group of thieves operates out of Old Covell Mansion. They spell it differently in different places of the uh, game. Or I just never remember right. I always want to call it Koval with an A. I'm sure I've seen that somewhere, though. But it's Covell Mountain Mansion. Didn't I just... Yeah, it's Koval in the proclamation spelled with an A. There are a couple places where that's the case. Find the nomads and stop them from joining forces with our enemies. A large tribe of kobolds is being recruited by the enemy. Make sure they don't join the enemy forces. All the commissions currently available. Um, let's see. Drop Skull Crusher. Yeah. I don't really want him in the party, otherwise it'd be fun to keep him, but, uh... He would leave at this point anyway. Okay, let's identify all these. Extra healing, which is actually useful. Potion and giant strength will be useful for the uh, big end game. Another long sword plus one. Okay, sell this. Keep this for if we get a shield. That'll still be useful. Might be better just to trade it to Jara, in fact. It's better than the flail in general.
Yep. Chainmail plus one. Figured as much. Okay, is any of this stuff... Oh, that's all the same. Any of this stuff useful? Stone statuette. Sell for 15 gold. Potion of healing. Uh, trade that to, like, have run stuff so I can use those if I need to. Sell the brass key. We don't need any more. Cursed necklace. Gives us 10 gold. Scrolls, which I can now uh, memorize spells off of. So she, it will be a while before she can level to, uh, it's like 25k to get her to level 5 mage, but I think I can get the rest of these characters to level 25 now. What do we have, 500? Okay, we're plenty good. We don't even need to whatever yet. Could even possibly spend some money on uh, actually healing, now that I think about it. Then I don't have to rest for days. It's a bit expensive, but we have money. I could also do lesser ones to save money, but I'm trying just to do this fast. Okay. Yeah, we still have enough for two levels each, so that's plenty. Especially for now. Okay, and it'll be a while before she gets to six, but now she'll have access to prayer and dispel magic, which can be useful if uh, we need to. Oh, we don't have enough to level yet, huh? I guess we need uh, 20k to reach level four. I don't have all the uh, level amounts memorized. So, okay, good to know. Well, we'll reach that uh, after this. First, we need to go see Bishop Brachio here. You're ushered into the bishop's study. Bishop Brachio speaks. Allow me to introduce Durton, priest of Ilmar. He is bound to recover the temple which has been desecrated to Bane. Go with him across the river and help him to cleanse the temple. In payment, you may keep the hidden treasures. Will you accompany Durton? Yes. You can say no to him, but I find it useful to have clerics because he can still cast a uh, whole person and other stuff. He's level 5 as well, I believe. Yep. Um, sleep spells would actually be useful for this section. Stinking Cloud are still the only things I need there. Alright, um... I guess I'll keep one of these, I hope. Yeah, that's mostly fine. Let's uh, get rid of these stupid spells, though. Yeah, I already have bless spells, so one bless spell is fine. Luckily, you can at least control what he casts. If this whole person is multi-target instead of AoE, it's not dangerous to have him with that. He unfortunately does not have a lot of uh, really useful equipment or items. Not that useful. Comment. We'll keep him towards the rear. So let's go ahead and finish out Bane, the wealthy district, and Koval Mansion. And then uh, that'll probably be it for today. For my part one of my actual playthrough. Uh, we want passage to the bay. Board a boat. You're on the eastern edge of the city. There are north and south entrances into the city and a small boat that you can take to the civilized area. Take the southern amount, puts us in the wealthy district. Now there is a mansion full of treasure here and some monsters to kill. For the most part, The only treasure and stuff we have to worry about really is here in the mansion. And this is why 
Why can I not cast? Did I forget to memorize again after resting? That's hilarious. I'm gonna go ahead and reload really fast then. I'm pretty certain I saved uh, the last point there. Because I'm pretty sure I can't do much in the way of uh, resting at this point. Yep. Weird that I've been forgetting to rest of all things after memorizing. Haven't been hitting the rest, rest button. Maybe I've been playing, uh, it's because I've been focusing on curse the last little bit, and that I exit and then fix, but since that fix command isn't there, I'm missing out. Okay, there, now we have our things memorized. At least I've still been saving just out of absolute habit. Gurton doesn't have enough money. Try to make Doton pay for the toll. He said no. That's horrible luck. You tried to cast old person on one enemy, which means that they get a minus to, uh, He's wasting all of his old persons in this fight, unfortunately. Okay, there are treasures in four of the rooms. You're in the remains of a once great dining room. The furniture lies broken, burned and broken throughout the room. Underneath the broken table, you find a crushed skeleton. It has some jewelry on it. Room filled with rubble and waste. In the rubble, you spot a beautiful tapestry. Will you take it? Probably not actually worth taking, but... And it's worth zero, so it's... We surprise some enemies, we flee from them. Huh. You're in a room that is filled with the dead bodies of the orcs' previous victims. Bodies, you find some jewelry. You see a group of four orcs whose shields bear a black hand in a red field. They cautiously look you over. Okay, that's good. That'll avoid a fight at the beginning. Pretty sure I didn't find anything in this room. Ah, there we are. Finally. Great hall. Little trash. You find you find a trap door. Will you open it? Okay. Clerical scroll, potion, and ring. Interesting. Uh, you go ahead and take all those. We'll figure out what the ring is later. Okay, that's all the treasure in the mansion. Yorks again. We can ignore them. They want us to find the treasure in the temple first, and then uh, will ambush us when we loot the last thing, or when we leave. But that means we can avoid the fight here. There are a couple more people you can talk to for clues. I'm going to ignore them. I'm just getting through this relatively quick, just grabbing the treasure. You stand in front of the entrance to a large shadowy temple. An old blind decrepit orc stands outside with eight orc guards. As you approach, they move, allowing you entrance into the temple. If you don't encounter those four guards, you have to meet them at the temple, so you either had to have gotten a... Leather holy symbol off the bodies of one of the orcs that you killed uh, at some point, or the uh, or you have to fight them, which is annoying. So in the speed run, getting that at least one encounter with the shield bearing orcs is very useful. Okay, now let's go ahead and cast bless and prayer. As you exit the temple, you are attacked by the priests of Bane. All right, let's see if we can hold Nace. All right, good. That's the one typical thing in this fight. We need to make sure he's damaged early on or rendered helpless so that we can... Uh,
Oh, I did two prayers instead of a prayer and his spell magic. Yeah. Sleep can't go that far. Oh, I'm doing whole person though, so that's fine. Nice, three for three. Should be getting relatively close to a uh, surrender victory here soon. them. Now Mace has a mace, interestingly enough, that's magical. I don't think his armor is, though, so we're not going to bother taking that, but I think, is it a plus two mace or just a plus one? We'll find out. Durton says, thank you for helping us regain the temple. I must stay here now. I bid you farewell. Thanks for helping out in those fights. This is the important uh, one with the all-important dust. 
Let's have Brandis take some potions. One for Vazia. Seven gold statuettes and Wood's holy symbol aren't anything worth worrying about. Uh, let's see, where are the other treasures? I forgot about them all, but they have some like interesting scrolls and stuff, including a scroll of uh, Fireball, which I can either use or memorize. A bunch of plus one weapons of various sorts. So mostly just cash. Uh, the scrolls and potions are in the last one, which is over here. Double clerical scroll, magic user scroll. Okay. And more sleep spells. I forgot to cast Cure Light Wounds for this. Oops. Okay, time to go to Koval Mansion. And clear these out in a nice one, two, three. That should get everybody to level five, I think. I'm going to deal with this similar to how I do in the speed run, and then uh, loot the rest of the rooms afterwards. As you enter the room, a thief with a sword comes out of nowhere. He tries to attack the party, but you stop him. Ouch, as you're in the room, backstabs the party member, just pierces the wall. Randis is hit for five. Well, where's people could be at? A scything blade drops across the doorway, damaging one of the characters. Fozzy is hit for four. That's very unfortunate. Um, I'm just going to keep her topped off with a potion of healing. Inside this room, you find a large pile of weapons and shields. They appear to be in good condition of fine quality. Search them. Near the pile, we're suddenly attacked by thieves. Uh, we should have been facing the other way. Okay, well, we're taking them out real fast, so... Let's see. Those long swords are going to be their base ones, so... It's basically just another bunch of weapons. I should have uh, gotten just tech magic for this. They might not even be magical. Okay, as you enter the room, two thieves come out of nowhere and attack the party. They fail miserably and run out the east door. Will you chase them? As you enter this room, the two thieves split, one going through the east door, the other going through the south. Which path do you follow? South. And this leads us into a big trap where we're ambushed by the thieves, but it's the best way to get rid of all of them super quickly. try and get the six level thieves. They have the best chance to resist, but they're also the most dangerous, and their six level creatures are immune to sleep, pretty much. For the six level thieves.
Okay, everything's uh, helpless now. Um, they just have their stuff. I don't think any of it's valuable enough to worry about. All right, so now the mansion is cleared. There's some information. Oh, on the floor you find some important looking files. The stuff the files in your journal under entries 38 and 51. Several pieces of paper with highly organized writing. Fact. Werner von Uslingen is a retired mercenary captain turned businessman. Strong rumor. Mostly interested in the military aspects of the reconquest of Flan. Rumor. Fought in a mercenary unit hired by the boss early in his career. Rumor hates Zentarim because he fought in a unit against them several times. Rumor has strong contacts with other mercenaries and some ruffians in town. None of our informants confirm such contact. Vague rumor. Von Erlslingen's unit was wiped out by enemy magic users. He was the only survivor. He retired and now secretly hates magic users. Okay, interesting rumors. Uh... Fact, Bishop Brachio is the highest ranking religious leader in Flan, runs small temple and civilized section of city. Vague rumor, Brachio is actually a front man for a powerful high priest who never leaves the small temple. Strong rumor, Brachio is under fire to do something about the undead problem. So long as the undead were causing the monsters more trouble than the settlers, he had other more pressing problems. Rumor, Brachio is opposed to the temple tendency to sell clerical miracles, but he understands that the temple needs funds. He is opposed to the temple tendency. Brachio would rather perform such miracles in exchange for good works done in the name of the church, not just for money or items of power. Okay. A nearby tape wall is a slate. Drawn on the slate is a complex maze with the words New Northwest Castle under it. You copy the castle into your journal under entry 41. And this is a map of part of the maze, yeah. So unfortunately not super useful for the audience. All right, 11 is a room with a cabinet, which will have some loot in it. Scything Blade is going to continually damage us. That's This is the one place in the game where it's really good to have a thief. Besides Cordona's textile house, if you have a thief, you can climb down a well and meet a thieves guild in the textile house, and they will tell you to bring the box back to them. That you uh, And then they will get the stuff out and replace the seal, so you get most of the loot, including the gauntlets of Ogre Strength, while, uh, and you still get the reward from turning it into Kadorna. So it basically it multiplies loot for you, although effectively you're robbing Kadorna, so not something great for lawful good people to do, but something possible if you have a thief, and uh, since he's an evil bad guy, you shouldn't feel too bad about it. Um... Hmm, great. Yeah, a lot of stuff is going to be broken if we do this. Oh, but holy cow, these magic users. Okay, I'm not going to get most of the rest of this because it's, uh... Because it is going to be trapped and stuff. Again, this is the other part where it's good to have a thief because they can possibly disarm and pick the locks. But there's... And I'll probably get plenty of treasure and experience from other places as well. But uh, this is a place that you can do that. Now we take the boat back. Okay, let's look over all of our items. Yeah, just a mace plus one. Just an ordinary scale armor, nothing great there. Ordinary weapons, which aren't super great. Just plus one. Zero gold pieces for the scale, it's that bad. Speed, giant strength, healing. Rodsword minus two cursed, we definitely don't want that one. Another chainmail plus one, which I can trade to... Oh, a shield plus two. Wow. Most of the rest of these are just regular, so we don't care much about them.
Ring of Feather Falling, which kind of doesn't matter. Those are all restoration. I'm running out of uh, stuff. Let's see. Let's go ahead and get rid of that because we're going to trade from somebody else. That's the chainmail. I can trade it now. Um, trade that to Merrimack. And yeah, actually, that's a good idea. I just remembered that she's using a regular shield, so. And she's actually in melee combat a lot, so it might be good for her to have the plus one shield. Trade that to Jara, and then Jara can use that with her long sword when she gets to melee. Need to go buy her some more arrows, too. Okay, now we're loaded with uh, platinum. 700 each. Oh, still need to identify a little bit of stuff, though. Feather Falling is almost useless, but I'm going to wear it just for fun. Oh, another one to identify. Okay, we now have more money than we can possibly use. Although I could theoretically get fine longbows, which allow your weapons to do a huge amount of damage. Maybe I'll go ahead and look into that. Okay, let's go ahead and turn in all these quests. You've cleared the area next to the evil temple. Here's your reward. A bit of platinum, gold, and gems. Council is pleased by the elimination of the thieves in Koval Mansion. Here's your reward. Congratulations, you may keep all you found in the Temple of Bane as a reward. Thought we were supposed to get more, but I guess not. Find the nomads and stop them joining. A large tribe of kobolds is being recruited by the enemy. Make sure they don't join the enemy forces. Find the source of the river's pollution and end it. There are also some lizard men that we can do at roughly the same time, although for some reason they haven't mentioned that yet. And no, we don't get any more reward for the temple. Our only reward was uh, keeping the stuff we looted out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, still not quite enough experience to level up Fozzy at a 5, which is unfortunate. Because I want to be able to uh, start scribing those other spells, but... Speaking of which, let's take a look at what she's got. Fireball, detect invisibility, reduce two fireballs. A stinking cloud, another fireball. Haste and hold person, blink, another fireball. So I have a lot of fireballs. So I could go ahead and skip learning fireball and haste and learn them from the scrolls and then use the rest of them on uh, another detect invisibility, another blink, another burning hands. A lot of repeated stuff. Mirror image, which I'm already memorizing as well. I forgot to pray before uh, doing the thief battle. Yeah. Um, going forward, most of the enemies are going to be more immune or resistant to sleep, so we're just going to stick to magic missile. Constitution of 19 finally came through, so now he's getting more hit points per level, which is good. Let's see, can I make 6th Cleric yet? Didn't think so. Figured I was a ways away, but I always like to check. But we should all be able to reach 5th level Fighter now. Okay, and 44. Uh, but he finally rolled well, a 13 total, which was an 8 with his plus 5 because of his higher constitution. 13 again, but Randis only got 6 this time. Ugh, he's catching up. But Jara's still going way behind. It's like it knows that she's going to turn into a thief, and so it's restricting her hit points. 
Although that's not going to be for two more games. But oh well. Alright. That's a good place to stop it for the day, I think. Yeah, thanks for watching my very basic casual playthrough of Pool of Radiance, checking out the Steam version. Uh, we'll be continuing this next week, where I'll be swapping my schedule to be doing afternoons and evenings. Uh, going to continue through with this part party and go ahead and do all... Uh, all four of the games. See if I can finally complete Pool of Darkness with that. But uh, that's going to be it for today, so thanks for watching. See you all later.